that happened for me, not because I know how to do it. But are you going to throw up? I tried to hold Are you going to throw up? I heard you go. <laughs> I tried to cover a cough. Who does I that? Wanna... I was losing hair. Don't talk to me about losing hair. I right. disagree with both of you guys respectfully. I didn't mean to say I know. I meant I know no, what you no, meant. No, and I know what you meant. I don't want to disappoint you, but I'm going to smoke till I can't see f***ing straight. And I don't <laughs> want to disappoint you. Your situations and the point of views that you need medication for is also the same gasoline that pushes your career. If it is a gift, I would love to return it or re-gift it to would, somebody Would else. you? Yeah, because I, I spend more time unhappy, battling in an incredibly dark place. My biggest weapon is distraction. And distraction is sitting here on your podcast right now, just having something to do each and every moment so I don't have to sink into my own mind because it's a dark place. Oh, he stays in here too. Who? Who? Reed? Reed. I mean, yeah, no, no, <laughs> Reed, stay, stay, Reed. <laughs> oh no, I didn't know. I didn't know it was starting. You just standing there staring at us. No, yeah, he he usually like controls the camera, so he probably feels useless right now. <laughs> no, but the cameras are all automated. They can he can control them. You know, he can give you the the switcher. You're, you're on camera <laughs> yeah. now. There's a camera there, so we could see you, Reed. Stay. No way. Yeah. So you. All could, right. This setup is pretty amazing. Yeah, this is great. Well done. Thank you. And also, I not have nothing just this to do room. with it. My son, Alex Mandel, who you know, yes. and you've worked with in the past, he built this, this himself th wow. with, with these guys. But it's built so that it's easy to accommodate, you know, different people, different shows. Yeah, I appreciate the background. Yeah, this is wonderful. Yeah. Yes, you, we've had that up for about two months now. Other people have complained about it, but it <laughs> works for you. Wait, why did they complain about it? Because um, just the font. They didn't like the font. He's making a joke that he's had your name, your oh, podcast name up for two uh, months. I'm God, sorry. I'm, so I'm sorry. No, now, no, no. now it makes sense. Why are you here? <laughs> no. oh, yes. I was thinking, why is she here? And you are so much prettier than Google. And uh, <laughs> right when you don't understand something, you will Google it and understand. And George didn't understand my You guys were having humor. communication yes. issues before we started. So yes. don't make it seem like no, it was no, my Before I didn't make sense out there and now I'm making sense. But I'm glad this switched. It took <laughs> her a while to just to get on the same wavelength. And now we're yeah. on the same wavelength and you're not. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to focus up though. I'm, you know why? Because why does this... Oh wait, we're doing an integration. You just splish splash. I wasn't focused because I wasn't ready. ASMR. Oh really? Yeah. Do, do you have a lot of those uh, listeners? <laughs> that like that i i, I find know. asmr makes me nervous i was gonna ask you that when just now that's because <laughs> like, oh, i didn't want to answer it until you were gonna ask yeah me that. well now i'm gonna ask you does it make you nervous it does i you know even in a movie if somebody's eating popcorn mm -hmm. or oh, you're my dad <laughs> you're what a way to find and you what a way to find out and you <laughs> did you just do 23 and me <laughs> It was the goatee and baldness and everything. You're oh my, my dad. Gosh, I'm probably yeah. older than your father. No, you're not. How old's your father? I don't know. You, you don't, don't know, know how old your father is? I don't. Once he hit a certain age, I try not to think of it. What age did he hit? I don't know. So when did you stop thinking? <laughs> like in his 60s. I'm in my 60s. You look like you're like 59. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I bet I'm older than your father. No, but you guys both actually look very good for your age. I'll say thank you on his behalf. <laughs> I don't, uh, for me, it's, that's not a, a compliment. Why? Because w you could say, and I've said this many times before, you could say to somebody, you look good, mm -hmm. or you look healthy, or you're handsome, or you're pretty. When you have to qualify it for your age, mm. then that takes away the whole compliment. What if I was leading it look, up with a question? Look, you are beautiful for an ugly girl. <laughs> it's like it's like saying you're not you're a beautiful girl i was just giving i it know a, you know <laughs> no i know what you and meant you're humble no and you're no i didn't mean to say i know i meant i know no, what you no, meant no and i know what you meant no. you know you're beautiful no i meant i know what you meant you're right no you didn't you're right no you didn't <laughs> he's right <laughs> but i'm saying when you qualify a compliment for a reason you're taking yeah i don't even have Will you finish the podcast for me? Absolutely. I don't Thank like you. how this happened. How did this happen? <laughs> how did this happen? Just a second ago, you guys, were, I, literally, when you guys were going back and forth, he would have to use me as a translator for her. <laughs> and now they're just like synced up completely. No. And by the way, I hate when people in the room sync up because they always attack the guy that's not synced up, okay? I tried. That's how I felt. Out and there. the reason I brought up the age is because I was following it up with a question. A lot of people in Hollywood want to know. 
Um, d- uh, uh, there's a question a lot of... of uh, because There's how, a question that a lot of people want to know. Yes, because uh, of how good you look. The people are asking me about how good I look? Yeah, the question is... I don't think so. Does Hollywood yes. drink baby blood? Is the Illuminati real? No. No. Honestly... No, and and it was also that QAnon thing, too. Yeah. They thought, they think, they do. So the QAnon people drink the baby blood? No, but they say that they, it was a thing that I, there's pizza and orange and all these. Maybe it's, maybe I shouldn't mention it because then I'm bringing it upon myself. Can we change my flavor? Really? It's orange. I don't want to be caught up in this scandal. Oh. No, <laughs> you're asking a guy in Hollywood if he would drink baby blood. You're asking a guy who won't shake a fucking hand. <laughs> Why would I drink baby blood and not shake a hand? Fair. Someone, fair. someone else's bodily flu. <laughs> yes, I fair. would. All right, it I just want to know because you're an elite. No. You're an elite in Hollywood, so I just want to. I'm know. an elite. I think you're an elite. I'm not an elite. I think in, you're an elite. in not in Hollywood, but I just for uh, clarification, we are not in Hollywood right now. We're in Van Nuys, California. And maybe in Van Nuys, I'm an elite. But as soon as you get uh, the other side of Lancashire, I'm not that elite. Nah, it, you're humble. Oh, bro. come on. Yeah. Take a yeah, lesson from icon. the guy. <clears throat> you're moving. You move, is the table too far from you, for you? <laughs> the table's actually taped down. You were trying to move the table. Move your chair. Your t- chair's on, <laughs> on casters. I didn't move, mean to move the table. I'm just really strong. Yes, they're out of sync you, again. All you right, accidentally like- moved the table. I'm just really strong. <laughs> All right, so I want to get into this, man. I, I'm I'm actually very excited about this, and also I'm, I'm very humbled. Thank you so much for being here. And no, I'm, I'm thrilled that you would uh, take part. That you would uh, that you would be here. Or oh, your friend just showed up. I think which one? I don't know. Oh, it's Davinci. A ba- it's, oh. A, it's a bald guy with a beard. It's your father. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he looks. My manager looks like a Fortnite character. He does. Davinci. Yeah. Davinci, could you show yourself real quick? If you stand behind that, if you stand behind that, there, there he is. You're on camera. Doesn't he look like, take your shirt off hey. real quick. No. no. Just what? for a second. Don't be worried about it. There's a camera there. Are you wearing joggers right now? Just take your shirt off. Look at him. Well, what is shredded. that about? He's a good looking guy. Okay. Thank you. Hey, David. <laughs> thank you. Now he, it's just he, uncomfortable. <laughs> a bald guy walked in. I said, well, who is that? And now you want to show me his, his six pack. <laughs> Eight pack. Don't, don't, don't go at my guy like that. <laughs> he hasn't had a carb since 93. Really? Nah. I would show you, I'm in shape now too. I've been doing uh, Kegel exercises. Cable exercises? Not cable. Kegel? K- Kegel. Kegel? Yeah. She knows. Ask I, her. I know what Kegel exercises are. What the hell is Kegel? Well, it. can guys do Kegel exercises? Well, why would you ask oh. a guy that just said, well, because, I do Kegel exercises, well, if a guy could do Kegel exercises? From my knowledge, a Kegel exercise is when you flex your... Your vaginal muscles to make it stronger. (laughs) Okay, so I do that, and I have a six sack. I'm gonna need you to explain. Because summer, summer is coming. I am, I'm ripped. I have a six sack. (laughs) She didn't get it, but I got it, baby. We back in sync. You didn't even know what a kegel was. No, I don't. But I know what a six sack is. I think I can do that. Look, I'm doing it now. (laughs) <laughs> Do you know what's <laughs> fucked up? Is that I looked at his crotch oh. and he hey, actually my eyes was are moving here. from flexing and I felt bad for Who are for you that. telling? Who are you telling? Who are you telling? Nah, nah. You were looking over there. Who are you telling? Oh, them. <laughs> oh, them. I think your people are looking at you over here. I'm sorry. I'm there, so sorry. There. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm new to this. No, the, but they felt, they felt dissed. But I feel like they're, they're a part of it too. As, oh, Reed, as Reed, well them. Reed is just staring at it. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. So I want, how are you? How is your day going? No, 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 no. Don't hit them with a generic question. Let's go just straight into how are you how, doing? How, today? how am I doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Without notes. <laughs> you have no notes. I have no, no notes. Have and you notes. were able to come up with that. Well, we're going to go deep. <laughs> fine. How are you? But are you really fine? You know what I mean? Like, it's it's a no. real question. How are you really hey, feeling? Hey, I'm pull, not pull, fine. Pull back, Bob. I'm not fine. <laughs> pull back. I don't know how I am. I'm not an expert. I talk about my mental health all the time. <clears throat> I don't know. I, don't I would well. actually love to get into that. Let, then ask. She asked the question, and you knocked her for asking the question. How are you? I think the answer is never right when people go fine. First of all, what is fine? Mm-hmm. How do you know she's you're fine? fine. How can we, well, You're talking about just externally. I don't know if she's fine on the inside. You're fine as hell. 
And then I wasn't talking about kegels when I said fine <laughs> on the inside. I meant like in your in your mind, in your head. Mm -hmm. I'm a mess. If that's what, if you really care to know, I'm a mess. I have. I I would love to ask you questions about. Um, you can ask me anything. There's nothing. Your mental health, because I I I love to dive deep with what people are going through, and I would love to learn from them. So not only could I learn from the experience, but maybe we could learn together about this. I think that in life. Um, there isn't anybody in life that at some point, at some point, they're going to need an outside force to help them cope. I use the Lord. Right. Whoa. We just got a sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. You mentioned his name. And <laughs> let there be light. And let there be light. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, I use I use the Lord. I wasn't a, a, like a firm believer until <laughs> good. Oh what, my gosh! Whatever it takes. I paid him twenty bucks. But I believe that. I believe that whether you, you know whether you are getting your strength and your coping skills from your religion, I, I respect it, and I respect wherever it is, or whether you're getting your coping skills from a uh, a paid therapist and pharmaceuticals. I respect that. Whatever you need to um, maintain, you know, and be productive as a human being in as far as being a good human being, being a, a functioning human being and being a good human being, I'm a proponent of, you know, and uh, I don't think there's any, that because I've been so verbal about specific mental health issues like OCD and anxiety and depression, I, I think, the, uh, you know, that just skims the surface of what the human uh, psyche goes through, whether it's a breakup or whether it's uh, losing somebody you care about or whether it's the, uh, the amount of pressure at work or failure at work or failure in life or not being able to achieve something or just how do we cope with these things? And, you know, you, as you say, and you and millions of others pray you know, and, and find strength and garner strength from outside. And have you ever tried praying? Have I tried praying? You know, my, my uh, kind of interpretation of uh, religion um, is very um, um, personal to me in the sense that the answer, the short answer is yes. The, the, um, you know, as a Jew, I'm a Jew. So as a Jew, uh, you know, we believe in whatever you want to call, whatever name you want to put to whatever the Lord is and, and is um, respect for a power greater than you, you know? And I think as long as you have respect for a power greater than you and you question it and talk to it and include that in your life, that's a good thing to do because it can't just be all just this. Mm -hmm. It can't be, and, and sometimes you need to go outside of yourself to get a perspective on what you're doing yourself and what the world is and you need help and sometimes you get that help from your church, sometimes you get that help from a friend, sometimes you get that help from a loved one, sometimes you get that help from a child, sometimes it, it comes to you in various ways, but I think ultimately it all is all controlled by a power greater than us. I 1 million percent agree with you. My perspective on it that I, wanted, I wrote down um, was I was watching you in a few interviews before we jumped on ours to make sure I don't want to recover things you've talked about. I want to keep it fresh. Okay. But when I saw you talking about your anxiety, I noticed a lot of traits that I dealt with. When I had these thoughts, sometimes they hyper spin in my head. So by the time we said, hey, how are you? I've already thought of 10 conclusions of where this is going to go. And if I focus on the negative, I could put myself in a really bad hole and it cripples me. And so when I fell in love with the Bible, I fell in love with a Bible verse that says, cast your anxieties onto me. And you just said that there's a power greater than you. And I've came to learn in my life that a man is going to fear regardless. So a man could either fear the Lord and begin wisdom, or he could fear everything else and not the Lord. 
So I chose to fear the Lord. And through that, I learned how to cope with my anxiety and depression through the scripture. Except, and I'm not arguing. No, I, no, I'm no not, argument, I, I, just a conversation. So I will never be offended by the one said. thing that I, uh, that I, that I bump up against is that is the word fear. Okay. You but know, can I ask you why? Because fear, the fear is a, is a negative connotation and life, every, every, thing we do in life see my my take on life is we as human mm. beings are this for all intents and purposes uh, 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 a super being as far as homo sapiens sapiens okay there you go thanks <laughs> so anyway but but i think what puts us above some of the other uh, creatures that inhabit this planet that uh, as, as uh, rather than human beings is we have this innate ability to uh, instinct. Our instinct is far superior than that of some other creatures. And that instinct, the, 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 that curiosity, that instinct that if we try this, we're going to invent the wheel. If we try this and do this instinctually, we got fire. That's how we have electricity. That's why we're landing on other planets. That's why we're, that, that is instinctually, this makes sense to some people. The problem that we have as a species is our thought process. And our thought process overrides our instinct. And our, our thought process creates fear. If you have an idea and you want to do something, you should do it. And that's why I love my favorite, uh, Nike has that uh, saying, just do it, which I learned on my podcast from Penn Jillette, came from uh, somebody, uh, a, a, a murderer that was about to be executed and he was in front of the firing squad. I can't remember his name, but he said, just, just do it. Which that was really? his last words. Yeah, that's where Nike got it from. So it doesn't have the same. It doesn't have the same connotation. Yo, that, yeah, it really he, that doesn't. Was, that's the hardest line to be your last line. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, what, well, do what's you have your any final? Word? Do you have any final words? Just do it. Yeah, he wanted to get it over with. He's got yeah. a twenty guns aimed at his head. Well, the anxiety. You know what I mean? The like, oh, oh awaiting anxiety. Of but, but but my point, my point is <laughs> that if if you negate fear. If you can negate fear and just do it, you will move ahead in life and do great things. If you have an idea about something and then think about it, there are a million reasons, kind of like what you just depicted about walking into a room. If you think, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Oh, he's gonna be nervous and then I'm not gonna. So then, I, so then maybe you didn't say something that would have been the right thing to say just because you were so afraid to not say, so fear, fear doesn't move you ahead. Fear never moves you ahead. And in fact, that's why my career, I'm, I'm close to 70. My career is still moving ahead because I say, yes, I'm more, if I have any fear, it's of no, it's of not doing something. I know that when yes, when I say yes, I could fail. But if I, even if I fail, then at least I failed and have an experience and an education as to how to maybe do that the next time or to not do that the next time. But if I say no, no is N-O, which is the, first, is the first two letters in nothing. You know, Christopher Columbus talked people into getting into a boat and flying and, and sailing off the edge of the earth. You know, if you really would have, common thought was that the earth was flat. Mm -hmm. Common, it, it, most people thought that. If fear took over, if reasoning took over, he would have never gotten the boat. We wouldn't be sitting here today on this podcast. So I, I, my feeling toward this power greater than us, regardless of what you call it and what religion you are in, is something to be respectful of, is something to be in awe of, is something to be aware of, but not something to be afraid of. And that's where religion kind of knocks me out. I'm not involved, even though I, I was born a Jew, I'm not involved in any organized religion. And in organized religion, you have these rules 
You know, and in life, we have these rules. I think I want to be the best human being I could possibly be. I want when somebody spends a little bit of time with me, and this is what I say to my kids, I want them to have an experience where maybe, maybe their life is just a little bit better because in some way, uh, the experience was positive in the time they spent with me. I don't want to be nice and charitable so I don't go to hell. Mm. so that I won't be punished. That's not the reason to be positive so in my mind. May I? Go. Okay, so I love your perspective. I would just love to share this point of view. Okay. Fear, I look at it in a very different way. <clears throat> I see the way you look at it, and I think that the devil uses the fear that way. For example, I think it's very wrong for a Christian or a Catholic or anybody in any denomination to be like, you're going to go to hell unless you blah, blah, blah. And then that that fear, that's fake love. That's not real love. And so the definition- I don't see any love in that. There's no love in that. Right. There's zero love in that. Right. Uh, but the fear that is described to me full vividly in my heart is the same fear that I have of disappointing my parents. It's not because I'm scared they're going to beat me is because I don't want to hurt them. Right. So I'm scared as a teenager in high school to, to dabble in drugs because it's cool because I don't want my mom to get a call one day because her son overdosed. Right. So I'm fearful of that. And through my stupidity in high school, I used fear to not disappoint my parents to correctly walk in a path that they would be proud of. And through that, I made choices that I'm proud of till this day because I'm glad I didn't get into that substance. I'm glad I didn't hang out with that crowd. I'm glad I didn't go do that cheating way to get ahead. And through that fear, I found wisdom on why I shouldn't already have done it. Okay. And that's the only fear I talk about. All and right. that's the only fear that the Bible talks about. The whole relationship is like an invitation. He's not coming. But you were saying fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord, the same way I have the fear of my father. I don't. But, they, but I understand why you don't want to disappoint them. That's fear. I'm terrified. It, I'd rather you, Howie, kill me than ever to stand before my parents and have them look at me with sorrow eyes of who I became. It would never happen. And that's the fear that I work well, on. I'm proud of you. Thank you. You're a good boy. I appreciate <laughs> it. You're a very good boy. <laughs> You're a good boy. I wanna, but I think we should all be good people. And we should all be good people because we shouldn't disappoint ourselves. I don't think there's a lot of good people out there I think but I think that people think and and too much of our world and especially the world that you and I are in right now is is predicated on the exterior and whether that's your looks whether that's your numbers whether that's the amount of money you have in the bank whether that's a, whereas it's not predicated on you're enough and as somebody who sits in therapy constantly you know, I think our world, and whether you're talking about religion, whether you're talking about politics, whether you're talking, whatever you're talking about, you're always looking outside to go, well, they do this, they do this, they need to do this for me, I'm in this. You need to create your own happiness. You, it, it, nothing, there are people that are in war-torn countries, there are people that were going, that survived the Holocaust, that were sitting in concentration camps, that were able to function each and every day. And even when they got out of the concentration camps, they, they built a new world for themselves and came over here and built a family and were incredibly successful. What I'm saying is you can always look for external reasons to be unhappy, to be depressed. I happen to be clinically diagnosed, chemically um, you know, unable to, uh, maintain a um, a content line of, of of existence, and and I'll do everything in my power, personally, also by the people that I mix with and how I act and the choices that I make, along with pharmaceuticals and doctors and uh, and whatever support group I put together with myself. I commend you for finding and believing and respecting in your religion it's because I, I was lost i was losing hair i, I grew up in a christian don't home, talk to me about losing hair i didn't mean that in that <laughs> but i i came from a christian home i right. lost my way okay and then through me losing my way i i lost my blessings i felt different it was a huge difference having a life your hair is your blessings 
I have then I don't have a fucking blessing. I don't. <laughs> Why do you think I'm talking fucking... to you about the Bible? I saw you from far away. I go, this guy doesn't talk to God. This is when the waters parted. <laughs> this is that joke you made had oh, yeah. me rolling. Your stand up bit where you talk about how Jews don't uh, swim. And, and then they part that was thank you that was really funny and actually i, I giggled after that because i know what well, you giggled at 10 minutes ago at an episode of reba which was on a decade ago so the fact that you're laughing now at a joke i made in my act from a decade ago i realize you get the laughs but with uh george you really got a hold you got a hold and you got to wait you're going to get the laugh <laughs> just not in this decade i'll hold i'm waiting are you still uh, afraid to go on to stage and do stand-up I'm not as comfortable as I used to be, and for different reasons. Um, I'm I'm uncomfortable still. Um, you know, COVID kind of uh, knocked me for a loop in as far as my germophobia and being aware that it was easy to get sick, which was always an issue uh, with me. And then um, the it's not cancel culture that worries me. It's just like. I just want you to, I just want to have a good time. I just want to make myself laugh. And that's what it's always been about. I just want to uh, have a good time. And I feel blessed that I, that I found that, my, uh, accidentally found that my silliness was enjoyed by other people. I didn't even know that it was a career. It wasn't something that I was pursuing. And I liked going on stage and at the, the beginning of my career, you know, the stage was my safe place, regardless of what I was doing. You know, I, I was on a show called St. Elsewhere and I did Bobby's World and a bunch of other things. You know, people would direct me and tell me where to stand and what to say and throw to commercial, but I could go to the comedy store or any other place and just go off the rails if I wanted to. And it was my primal scream at the end of the day. And I was so um, enamored with, uh, uh, you know, when I first came out here, I watched uh, Richard Pryor, you know, and Richard Pryor is a guy that had a lot of demons, you know, he was addicted to drugs and almost died from freebasing and he was grew up in a brothel and of this in the streets of Chicago. And it was the first time I watched somebody, a comedian kind of, um, you know, before that I was friends with, I was friends with, I was a, a fan of, you know, like um, uh, Rodney Dangerfield and, and, uh, uh, George Carlin and these people and, and Bill Cosby and they had routines and they wrote jokes that maybe weren't real, but they were funny and they were great. You know, whether you were the weather, I don't know if they were real. And, and um, Richard Pryor was the first guy that I noticed that was on stage and he was talking about really dark subjects and, you know, being addicted to drugs and having horrible relationships and making fun of the, the crack addict on the street, you know, and, and, and doing those characters. And I thought, oh my, and, and at the time, you have to put yourself the perspective of being in the 70s. People yeah. were, their jaws were on the ground and he would talk about religion and things like that. He did a bit that just, I'll never forget. And I've talked about it before and, maybe I'll, I'll bring it up here, but it was a religious bit with, um, that left the whole audience crying. And I thought, oh my God, this was, he could push the envelope. And then I realized he was the one that told me that kind of didn't tell me directly, though I got to hang out with him a lot. But he's the guy that kind of informed me that these clubs are like gymnasiums. And if I want to go in and I want to try something and I want to be outrageous and I want to find out where that line is and go too far, because I always went too far. Everything I've ever been punished for, expelled for, hit for is what I get paid for today. Mm -hmm. So if I go too far, that's what comedy is. Yeah. You used to, even in the street, if somebody was offended by something you said, then uh, you could go, oh, I was just joking. And that was okay. Joking was... The no, panacea yeah. for offending, you know, like if you <laughs> you couldn't offend somebody if you were just joking. Yeah. And that's why I loved comedy. And nowadays, because of social media, first of all, you know, media, when I started in the business, was a, a real journalist, a, a, a newspaper writer, magazine writer, a news anchor. That was media. Now media, if you're on Twitter or you're on anything, it's some you know, 15 year old kid in his underpants sitting in his room, <laughs> writing about what he heard somebody said, his yeah. interpretation of what somebody said. So what scares me is that something I say in public, 
even now talking to you out of context could roll into uh, a snowball effect and be hurtful. So your question is, am I comfortable with stand up? I'm not even comfortable being on here today. Mm. I'm not comfortable that somebody takes something that I just said to you or the discussion that I'm having with you and thinks that I am disrespecting the church. Mm. Right? Somebody could take this out of context that I didn't agree with you or or whatever. And then that grows into something which becomes hurtful to millions. I'm just here just trying to make myself happy and hopefully make a few other people smile. Mm. But now words have become so powerfully misdirected. Yeah. And I'm in the business of words that no, I'm not comfortable anymore doing it. I want to do it. I enjoy doing it but I don't have that same, it was a, It was so great that at the end of a day of work, at the end of the day of being on the set, at the end of the day of spending at home, I could go down to Sunset Boulevard, get on the stage at, at, at the comedy store and just have my primal scream and just go fucking crazy yeah. and just say whatever I wanna say and be outrageous. And you know, for me, comedy is saying something. What's funny is it's, it's, it is wrong. That's yeah. why it's funny because it's wrong. Yeah. There's no such thing as too soon. There's no such thing as that you cross the line. There really isn't in real comedy. There shouldn't be. And you know, comedy, I say this at almost on every podcast, but I, I truly mean it. Comedy comes from a dark place. Comedy, even as a little boy, if you go to the, the uh, circus and you laugh at the clown falling down, you're laughing at somebody else's misfortune or you laugh at somebody getting a pie in the face, you're laughing that somebody got messed up, that's not comfortable for them and that's what makes it funny. If two guys walk into a bar, it's not a joke unless something fucked up happens to one of the guys. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. people gotta remember that. You can't make nice. Real comedy, real pure comedy is not nice. And I have friends who have lost careers, though there is a resurgence now, there is a group of comedians I think people like uh, Joe Rogan and that whole group. Kill Tony. And, and Kill Tony yeah. and Burt Kreischer. And, uh, They're uh, holding the foundation of comedy. Well, more people are playing arenas than ever before. They don't have anybody to answer to. And those people that show up to their shows in arenas know what they're getting. But it's, it's a different world now because they're so siloed, you know, in the sense that when I was coming up, if there was somebody playing at the, you know, we didn't have the, the Microsoft Theater in that, we had the forum here. If somebody was playing the forum, and I don't care if it was music or whatever, if I didn't like it, if you were big enough to play a 20,000 seat auditorium, everyone in the world knew who you were. They know, like if I didn't like country music, I knew that, Re and Reba was playing there, I knew who Reba McIntyre was. I didn't go to a Reba concert, but I knew who she was. Today, comedians and musicians, can go sell out arenas and stadiums and you don't know who the fuck they are. And that's because- This is beautiful. This is a beautiful thing that you're pointing out though. And I, I wanna just, I wanna highlight a few of your words and circle back to them. Okay. So when we were doing the tour around your studio, I was blown away from the success that you had from selling carpet as a, as a colorblind man mm -hmm. to walking me around your studio with new projects that you're working on, like the one you're sitting next to. And then this is the set of this, and this is the set of that. And then I know what you've worked on and I know what you're working on. Now, we just talked about you saying, just do it. That thought has always been in your head of fear of not doing something. And look how far you've come just by telling yourself, just do it. Now, now you're scared because there's a lot more people giving out their point of views. When you saw a couple of years ago, I didn't know who Reba was, or I didn't know who Reba was, and she's selling out a stadium. But now you're also saying, <clears throat> there's a man you don't know that's selling out stadiums. It's because there's no more filter. It's you and the audience on your phone. Well, it's also because the delivery system is very different, like this podcast. You know, you, this podcast plays on YouTube. You have over a million subscribers. That's absolutely huge. The point is, I there's a lot of people that don't know who you are and have never listened to this, yet this is huge, and you can yeah. do huge business and get paid big money from sponsors to do this. There was n the delivery system for anything 20 years ago 
was, and I, I'm not, and that's why I'm pivoting and that's why I'm in this studio. And I'll talk about that a little later. The delivery system was, if you got on TV, mm -hmm. if you got on, when I started out, if you got on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, the next day, your life was not the same. If you weren't selling out an arena, then you were offered a sitcom. And if you had a sitcom, everybody knew your name because that was the only place to see things. If you had a hit on the radio, everybody knew what the top hit was or the top 40 was. Yeah, I can go, I don't like it. You I don't know. wanna go see Wham, but Wham is number one, you mm -hmm. know? And my point now is because we live in this digital age, you can be you can be on Spotify or you can be anywhere and you could download just the kind of music you like. Mm -hmm. And if you are just a fan of hip hop, you don't know who the who the number one country star is. You don't know who that person is. So the billboard, you know, they have um, billboard will take the numbers from all these different streams and say this one's downloaded more or uh, than this song. And then you can, if you wanna read the billboard chart, you could see the, the top 10 on billboard. And I promise you that any person, and that never happened before, I bet you there's three artists on the top 10 that you don't know. Just yeah. because you're not, you're not, uh, you, you don't listen to that. It just expanded, the entertainment world expanded. So there's but so much. But at the much. same time, it's siloed because you don't have to be, if you were on a TV show, then everybody knew you, even if you didn't watch the show. But now there are, you know, you may not have Netflix, you may not have mm. Peacock, you may not have Roku. And there's a show that's huge that everybody's talking about. It's super saturated. There's just so many outlets. You know what I mean? You have so many options. But they garner their own audience. And then another audience, even if they're not watching, hasn't even heard of it. Yeah. Fair, but it, it, and when you came around, it was way fucking harder for you to blow up. There wasn't that or, many ways or, to get on stage, or to, or is it easier? No is it way. E well, you know that's a that's a six of one, a half dozen of the other. Because I knew that if I got to the comedy store, you're in L.A. If I got, I knew that being on the comedy store every night, I was gonna get in the eyes and ears of people that could make a change. But what about people that can't come to L.A. Now, see, it's it's no, harder. Listen, no. The, the, the point is now it's easier because now you don't have to be in LA. You could be Roman Atwood in Ohio. That's what I'm doing, saying. Doing pre so we're agreeing. It was we? harder in your time to make it than it was now because like you just said, the, the car, sh the car, sh um, sorry, the, the late night show that you're saying is a big deal. Howie, for you to be on those stages, you had to be competing with certain comedians that are trying to share that time with you and only this city people are flying around the world to come here you competed with the best of the best at the time when so, there was only three different type of outlets and you made it so but here's so here's the the conundrum the conundrum is yes you could be in ohio in your house doing something and and garner a huge audience and be seen but by the same token there's a million more people doing that yeah. So how do you know you're going to get seen? There isn't anybody alive that doesn't have a podcast. Yeah. My, the guy that does my lawn has a podcast. He really has a podcast. No, nah, I, 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 now I'm understanding what you're saying. You're saying the competition pool is bigger. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's, it's really, that's why even at this point in my <laughs> life, I never dreamed, number one, that I would be in this business, but more importantly, that when I broke into this business, which is in my mid twenties, that I would still be working in my sixties. And now that when I walk out on the street and somebody knows my name, you have no idea how flattered I am that you know my name because you have so many options. You could be, you could be doing, are you sick? Are you no. sick? You've been coughing. No, 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 I promise you I'm not sick okay. whatsoever. I have like, really sensitive lungs and this was like a month ago. So it just took. You have sensitive <laughs> lungs from a month ago. <laughs> no, yeah, I was. That's so funny. No, no, you, seriously. Uh, what does went, that even mean? I had a cold goes, a month sick? ago. I had a month, a whole entire month ago. Yeah. But then I had really bad allergies. So I had a special ointment and it like weakens her. And so my cough just longer. But she I'm had not an allergic whatsoever. reaction. It wasn't a sickness. All I heard was ointment <laughs> and weak lungs. <laughs> I'm so fucking <laughs> nervous now. No, no, but no, I anyway, promise no, it's you. Okay. It's okay. Well, wholeheartedly, you're not wholeheartedly, I'm not sick whatsoever. I wholeheartedly, you you're not sick. Pro what does that even you. mean? That, that Wholeheartedly, I'm not sick. I just sick. don't want, I'm I don't want to make you nervous. Heart, it's a, what about whole lungly? 
Well, okay, that, she can't say that because it's not a whole lung. She doesn't even have a whole lung functioning. No. <laughs> you have very sensitive lungs. That's she has very sensitive, sensitive lungs so and like she like, smokes. Like, Do you so smoke? It, I don't smoke. You smoke every day. I, oh, I, you vape. No, 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 no. 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 Do you think I would date a vapor? And uh, so it's a smoker. No, nah, I don't smoke, we smoke weed. No, it's oh, okay. okay. Do you smoke weed? Not anymore. I did. I did a lot during COVID. Yeah. Yeah, but I, 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 I but you I didn't did. like it. No, I have a very. Uh, I don't know when to stop. So, the, so I, uh, I, don't <laughs> I don't have wait, sensitive lungs. Wait, 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 wait. That's what we deal with. We don't know when to stop. Well, no, mostly me. You, yeah, I don't me, have mostly. an issue stopping. Actually, you're right. I'm so sorry. Right. And Thank I gotta you. stop cutting and you I off. Guess if, I guess if you smoked, uh, if you if you stopped smoking or cut down a little bit, would that be disappointing to your parents? <laughs> I was 27 years old when I started smoking. Yeah. And I sat both of my parents down and I asked them permission for it. Oh, you, mommy, mommy. Can I? <laughs> Why did you make my, it seem like I was a foreigner? Did you see that? Why is that a foreigner? And he goes, "Mummy." <laughs> that was Canadian. <laughs> what I, I think that Americans say "mummy," "mummy," and "daddy." Yeah, "mummy," "mummy." Uh, is it? I don't want to disappoint you, but I'm gonna smoke weed till I can't see fucking straight, and I don't want to disappoint you. <laughs> No, I don't want to disappoint no, 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 you. No, no, I no. want you to be. It wasn't like that. I, I want you to be proud of me. And I'm only going to date people that smoke and smoke so much that they have no, sensitive lungs and they need ointment. Shut me up. No. She's I, my best friend. I had no. I need to clear this up. No. I had bad allergies it's, for like three. I months. know, and then you had ointment. And then yes, I had to put on the special cream for my eyes and my neck. You had to put on. You had a, you okay? You had well, I mean, you did have COVID last and week. It, we, no, I didn't. <laughs> So you were you had a cold. <laughs> your lungs are weak, and you put uh, ointment on your eyes. Yes, I had. A and you're wondering why it's lingering. <laughs> yes, because ah! of the ointment. This is was, so fucked up. <laughs> it like weakens your immune just a little bit, and so it just it took longer. Why for my are you cough putting ointment to... on your eyes when you <laughs> have a my... cough? Because <laughs> why are you coughing now? What are you? No, have? <laughs> this is this is. I'm coughing because I turn around and scratch my throat. <sighs> I just want to clarify. I want to clarify. Uh, I want to clarify. The air. The <laughs> Bring in an air clarifier, purifier. Uh, I just want to clarify. When I talk to mommy and daddy about it. Do they smoke? No. My my dad smokes once in a while with me. But he, he, oh, gets, cool. he gets really, he, he doesn't like that I smoke. Because I, I started smoking because I couldn't sleep. Like I have really bad insomnia. So like I could. That's why I, so I started taking gummies. Well, I've, I've smoked years ago. I started taking gummies and then you get used to it. You get addicted. So I was taking five milligrams, 10 milligrams, 20 milligrams. <laughs> and then I would take 20 milligrams and smoke a, a, a joint. And then a 20 and, and then a couple of shots of liquor until I would just pass out. And it, Hey man, you just went from relaxing to a rock star. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> well, I, I don't do anything now. Yeah. I don't do anything. I didn't know how to stop. I don't do anything half asked and and i i over uh indulge in whatever i'm doing whether it's we're work. the same person i swear we're the same person so you you're doing a whole episode where you're talking to yourself yeah basically i mean i don't have any self-control if i fall in love with the direction i can't get off of it like i will just just west and i'll just keep going west even if it, so i told this to somebody it's really really dangerous to have that type of mindset because then you could get stuff done right you like even if it's hard say you want to accomplish something through the lows and the highs you could keep going because you're patient and you're and you're focused on it but what happens if you're focused on something you don't like i mean that you like but it's not good for you you just get in that hole Shit that's what happens addiction starts though you know i always tell people the difference between elon musk and you is he did it and you didn't. You know, that's the only difference. And you know, Steve Jobs, they did it and you didn't. If that was your interest and you wanted to, you know, come up with PayPal where they can just pay online, you would drop out of everything you're doing and just work on it and work on it and work on it and work on it and work on it. And work on it. I can't tell you how many comedians were so much better, so much funnier, so much more deserving talent-wise than me that don't even do it anymore because life will throw you can it depends on your attitude so many disappointments so many no's so many failures it's really easy to give up and most people give up and how much are you willing to push 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 i believe that everyone everyone alive can make it if you push through 
Mm. I mean, and and I think that you know everybody has their their limit. That they're you know, or they don't want to push through. Or they want to, even though they they believe their life is miserable, they've made their life easier. They don't want to. They love comfortability. They like to sit where they're at. Or they get scared. They don't want to move. Right. Most people l go through a week of work. Uh, most people are working at a job they hate. Most people, I think, are doing something they hate and they can't wait for the weekend just so that they don't have to do that anymore, but not because anything great is going to happen because they don't have to do whatever it is they hate. But if you say go after something you like, they go, I got to pay the rent. I got to take care of the family. I got to do, you know, there's always a reason there. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. The thinking, thinking isn't good. Thinking stands in your way. I just happen to have been um, born also, I have other issues, ADHD. So I don't think of ramifications, you know? So I just go, okay. Yeah. And then I got to- Was that the it. secret to your success? Because what I'm trying to do is figure out a way to explain to somebody that has your same type of elements that you live with. Because mm -hmm. watching you perform for the first time all the way up until now, you you leaned into your nervousness and your-, and your I didn't, it just happened. I didn't know. There was no plan, no thought, no- So you're listening. just saying literally just do it. I think that we are all, just by being human, incredibly talented, creative, wonderful pieces of art. And if we lean into who we are and not try to, and not think, uh, and then I think that good things will happen. But the problem is that our culture and our society is bombards us. In fact, that's what your job is, George, is bombarding people in on social media and we, that's what we all do with what it should be what it should look like how you should act so mm -hmm. therefore they're influenced that's what an influencer you're influenced by that whereas the beauty of you and you who's ever listening and watching being not like anybody else yeah not the same experience you will never experience the same thing even if we're all in the same room you are hearing this from a different perspective than anybody else if you really just can live in the now, not think, and just do what you do. This, we are amazing creatures who have the ability to do whatever. We choose to not do whatever because it might look stupid, because it might you might be made fun of, because you might lose your job, because you won't meet the your friends will be, it'll be embarrassing because you don't want to disappoint your parents because you don't want to disappoint, whatever the reason is, it's, it's not, it's never from within. And as soon as you give yourself the power from within to just act, great things will happen no matter how stupid and how silly and how crazy they are. And that happened for me, not because I know how to do it. That happened to me. But are you going to throw up? I try to hold the Are you going to throw up? I try to hold. This is I, the worst I, fucking podcast. I, She's I, coughing with sensitive lungs and putting ointment on her eyes. He's gagging up. You swallowed your own puke, didn't no, you? No, I heard you go. I try to cover a cough Who does I didn't that? want to scare Who you. Who does that? <laughs> but by, by not scaring me, you, you're torturing me. The between the two of you. And you don't tell me it's not contagious because you're both making the same same noise she put ointment on her eyes and you're <coughs> so howie tell me what the secret to life is <coughs> no it's nothing it's nothing we're sensitive we are a couple with sensitive lungs we are okay that's right babe yeah there we go uh, no but it is true we are so i mean we're so caught up and worried about what everybody else thinks of us that then our train of thought only goes to like well what is he going to think of me if i do this or what, what, what is she going to think if if i react this way when it's yeah our own our own minds because we are different that's what makes us stand out and that's what made these people with these talents stand out from all these from all the thousand other people because but that's why different. we get up in the morning and comb our hair and dress you're exactly. dressing yeah. you don't do not that for yourself what i don't comb my hair <laughs> <laughs> cap you're lying <laughs> i don't you, I sa do. you said when you have this studio you're you're taking it in a new direction i kind of want to lean back into that so what direction are you taking it? well what happened was when i did uh, years ago i did a show called deal or no deal and deal or no our roommate deal was, was on your show as a contestant uh, or a nurse? She's no oh, longer a nurse. Uh, <laughs> as a, <laughs> I'm still thinking that's what I need right now. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a model. She, a yeah, model. She was a case girl. Her name was Olga Safari. I know Olga. Yeah. That's your roommate? She was she our was, roommate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had like a... We had, wow, look at, look at this life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
You know, it's so Such funny. I, I like. He I, lives with Olga and you. And Vicky and, Palacio and Simi. I lived with only women for like, I felt like Jack Tripper, but on like twice. Yeah, the Lord works in strange ways. See, this is what I'll happens you. when you fear the Lord. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Olga's beautiful. She You're is. beautiful too, yeah. She Thanks. moved out. Not beautiful enough to open up a suitcase. What's going on? Why don't you give her a job? I don't do the show anymore. <laughs> oh no, you don't do the show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a suitcase. There's well, a suitcase right here. There was a but show. anyway, my point was you. You want to? Yeah, should I, I answer the no, question? No, no. But I want to circle back to the deal, no deal, because you told me something that stuck with me last time we were talking. And no, but what I was saying is, I forgot what the question was. What was the question? The direction of you're taking the studio. Oh, I, w when that thing went through the roof, instead of taking a big raise, what I did was I took um, a production deal that were, uh, and offices and I was at Universal. And I felt like at, when I was at Universal, they wanted me to create IP shows for television. And I felt like I was working, you know, like throwing a party at your parents' house. You know, I, I, I had ideas that they weren't specifically for TV. And, or if you had an idea and you wanted to shoot something, it was a couple of minutes and it was gonna be for an influencer or just, I couldn't bring somebody like you on the on the lot with, go through the gate. You couldn't bring your camera guy. Like you came in today mm. with Reed. You can't do that at Universal, you know? You gotta be in yeah. the union or he has to be in the union to hold a camera. And if I wanted to, uh, you know, so I just said, I, I, thank you. I, I got out of that deal and I bought my own space. And here, you know, if I meet somebody, like the people at Proto who do holograms, I say, come, you guys can work here. Use this space, Use do that. I've said to your guy, Reed, if you want to do, I don't know where you do your your podcast. If you want to come here, that's how I met you on uh, Impulsive. Yeah. I said, when 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 he's in, in LA, just come and use this area. And that's how I meet people. That's how I met you. That's what we can collaborate. We can make a show. We can make uh, an app. We can make, uh, uh, you know, some short form digital thing. We can come up with an idea for a game, a product or whatever. So I like this kind of collaborative, fun space where people from different, I'm not just a comedian anymore. I'm just a guy who's curious. My son teaches me everything about, you know, I'm on every platform. I had no idea what TikTok was when it started. You know, he put me on TikTok. I have 11 million followers on TikTok, but yeah. it, it just, uh, but, but I like it and I like it. I used to just do what I do and then whatever happened, happened. But now I'm fascinated. Like I'll see a, a, a YouTube video and I'll be reading the comments and it's got like a hundred million clicks on it. And everybody in the comments is saying, this is the funniest thing in the world. And I'll be honest with you. I'll, I'll go, I don't, why is this the funniest thing in the world? I don't get it. And I sit with, I have a lot of young people here who go, you know why that's funny? That's just like what they do when they do this, or that's like the thing, or that's the new, new thing. And I go, wow, that's kind of cool. So <laughs> my, my biggest juice, my biggest draw, my biggest po power right now is curiosity. I am so fucking curious. And every day I wake up and I feel like I'm missing out on something. And it is really easy. A lot of people my age, and I have a lot of friends my own age, a lot of people my age find a place where in their life where they were really comfortable and then you just stay there. Yeah. And then you hang on and you go, oh, you know what? That's not music. When I was a kid, that was music. Or those, look at the crazy, look at how they're dressing or look at what they're doing. And you know, as kids, we, and as human beings, as young people, curiosity is what people uh, kind of prey on, right? You'll look in magazines or you look online and you go, oh, this is what they're doing. I'll buy into that. I'll buy this game. I'll download that. I'll buy this music. And you just want to know. And then there comes a time in your life where you go, well, I don't care. I just like this song and I'm going to play this song over and over again. I'm all, these are the pants I like. They're comfortable on me. I'm going to do that. And I haven't come to that point yet. And I don't knock it, but I'm just as curious as I was when I was 10. That's and that wonderful. Cu that curiosity doesn't go away mm -hmm. for that, me. That's, I think that's what's going to keep you like healthy for a very long time. Yeah. I, you know, I have friends who are like, I'll be 68 this year. So I have friends that are my age that are uh, doctors and retired. And, and, and I sit with them too. And they're happy and they're content. 
I can't be content thinking that the world is moving on. So the you way FOMO TV is from done, it? is that why? I do, and 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 that's even something that's my addictive personality. I lie in bed at night. I don't sleep, and that's why I was taking the the gummies and all that. I lie in bed at night, and I we- worry about like. There's got to be something. There's a platform. There's probably a new platform. Like, what is this? Threads. I got. I got to get on it. They're opening it tomorrow. I got to get on. If I miss, if I, if I'm not there, if I'm there on the third day, I'll be. I won't be able to communicate. I won't even be able to get on a thread because everybody's going to be on. You know, I. I'm so worried. That's not I'm, a good thing. That's crazy. That is. That your your situations and the point of views that you, that you need medication for and that you need a therapist for is also the same gasoline that pushes your career. Yeah, but people say, "Do you think it's a gift? It's a g- if it is a gift, I would love to return it or re-gift it to would, somebody." Would else. you? Yeah, yeah, because I, I spend more time unhappy, battling in an incredibly dark place, and my whole each and every waking moment is um, I'm trying to just claw and stay in the light, and and my biggest uh, weapon is distraction and distraction is sitting here on your podcast right now doing a podcast after that you're going to be on my podcast just having something to do each and every moment something interesting something that pulls my attention so i don't have to sink into my own mind because it's a dark place Hmm. i know you're not a religious man but i am gonna spend time praying that whatever it is that you need to stay in the light fully and rest in the light I pray that you do find that. Well, I really appreciate that, and I respect that. And I just, uh, listen, I'm surrounded by a lot of very religious people, you know, who, who and, and I totally respect that, love that, and love that intention and that energy, which I do believe in, that comes, that you can- Everything's energy, it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, everything. It's just, uh, it's, it's an amazing world that I am constantly curious about and open to. Yeah. I think that too many of us are real close-minded, very close-minded, because what you don't know or you don't understand and you can't control for most people is really scary. Yeah. You know, but fear has been also a really good uh, energizer for me. I I, I was saying I don't like fear, but there's a certain kind of fear that's a thrilling fear. You know, I love roller coasters. Really? I love roller coasters. How? You're just getting tossed Howie. around. <laughs> I don't know. It's an adrenaline. It makes you feel alive. I've gotten really comfortable with discomfort. And if I'm not uncomfortable, if I'm not scared to death, if I'm not, then I get, then I can think. I don't want to sit on a little track in the breeze going through trees. I want you to throw me as high in the air as you can and drop me in. I'm just in the moment. I can't think about right. anything else that is different. And that's what, when somebody goes, ladies and gentlemen, Howie Mandel, and I walk out on stage, it's that. It's adrenaline. That, it's that adrenaline. It's that, you know, and that's and I'm, that forces me in the now. Mm-hmm. And that's where I'm the most productive. Right now, in this second. Because if I think about what I might have said, what I might have did, and worry about that, then I'm just worried. Did I offend somebody? Did I do something wrong? Did they think I was an idiot? Did they do that? You know, and it's just, I could roll that around in my mind forever. Mm -hmm. I can also be concerned about what I'm about to do and I'm really worried and I'm scared and I don't, uh, and that, that's just, that's just a block. And that's just something that continues to slap me on my brain over and over again. But right now in this second, talking to you, I can't think about anything else, but the next word that's coming out of my mouth. Yeah, hundred percent. And so, when you think about why would you put ointment on your eyes if you have <laughs> sensitive lungs? What? <laughs> Please, do you really? Do you want me to explain it? Why I have the ointment? No, no you're I gonna do. scare him even more. <laughs> yeah, okay. What were you gonna say? <laughs> no, um, I was gonna say that, you know, you said that it is. It's you know worrisome to people because you're not sure how somebody's gonna take something. Right? They might. They might take something you said in a different way and then that makes you look bad, right? Or, but how do you, do you ever think it's about- It's not about me looking bad. It's about me, it's about taking something out of context that I might say yeah. and them feeling bad. Yeah. Them, the, 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 I don't want to be responsible for offending somebody 
and where they feel real offense, where they feel belittled, where they feel that I don't respect them, where they're worried. I'll give you an example. Uh, the, uh, on AGT, mm -hmm. we had a guy who, uh, he was known as the regurgitator, was Heidi Klum's favorite act. And he, he had the ability to, he swallowed all these coins yeah. and he could throw them up. And you ask for whatever coin, like he swallowed a nickel, a dime and a quarter and, they, and a light bulb, you know, and, and a razor blade. Oh my you God. could request, I wanna see the dime and the razor blade. And he would go, <laughs> and he would bring up whatever, he's the regurgitator and he would bring up, it was disgusting. Yeah. But it's like it was a disgusting funny. DJ. Like the requests are just or, weird. Or a murderer, the red entertainer. So I <laughs> said, uh, it just flew out of me. And I'm going to preface this by saying I, I apologize up front. But I said, you make uh, bulimia entertaining. <laughs> you know? And and I, I, I said that on, yeah, on the air, funny. on live. Yeah. But they said uh, i got a lot of uh, nbc asked me to uh, apologize and i do apologize and there were people that wrote in that said you know i had a sister that passed away from an eating disorder you are somebody who uh, uh, talks about mental health and you're an advocate for mental health this is not something to make a joke of and i agree it's not something bulimia is not funny it's not anything to make a joke of, but what really bothered me is that people who were enjoying the show all of a sudden are thinking about their sister that passed away. Yeah. They're thinking about their mental health uh, struggles. And this is not, this was not my intent, but as I told you, stand up comedy or comedy is about dark. taking comedy. something yeah. dark. Yeah. You laughed at it, which is the response that I was kind of- It was of hilarious. Going, I know, but it, yeah. but the fact that, it can also be hurtful mm -hmm. is what it, worries what me. You? And I don't want to be mm -hmm. the the one pulling the trigger that could hurt somebody who was shot with a, a, you know, a memory of something really negative because I said something that I thought was did, silly and funny. Right. In the did moment. you mean to hurt her? The girl who got offended that wrote in. Context, no. So do you make jokes about your mental health and how like it, it kind of you know, understand I, I mean people don't take my mental health that seriously because i do make jokes of it but but for so, me so you're taking, i have to laugh about it so i don't cry about it you know for me my that's only, what comedy my, is you're taking a dark situation you're lightening it up so why okay well you go to each and every person that hears everything that i've ever said and you do, go tell them that and 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 convince them of that the point is that people are hurt by words people are are hurt by thoughts people are hurt and we have to um listen if i'm going to be a broadcaster if i'm going to be in this business i am cognizant of that and and uh you know at times you know i will spew and I don't know that I haven't in this hour that we've been sitting here, I will spew ideas and thoughts and words. And maybe there are people and you'll read it in your comments that were offended by one, two, three things that I said, or maybe even you said, there is gonna be a ton of people that are going, why the fuck would she put ointment on her eyes <laughs> with right. sensitive lungs? Well, yeah, everybody always has a different perspective and they're gonna take things differently. We can't control that. And so, and that's why I was wondering if it was, it wasn't, it's not so much the judgment that somebody might put on you, but it's more so that you don't ever want to be responsible for somebody's hurt. You don't, you don't That's exactly it. I right. disagree with both of you guys respectfully. How, what, what, what did she say that was, that made I you would, do it? I was I, understanding I, his I, point of view. And, and that's where I, I, I disagree. I think that you're a kind human being and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that you come from a good place. So let me ask you something. Yeah. You're a good person. Mm -hmm. Do you feel bad if you're walking in a store and you step on somebody's toe and they go, ow? Yeah. Okay, so as a human being, you feel bad. So if I spew some words and step on their mental toe and they go, ow, I feel bad, just like you would feel bad of stepping on somebody's toe, even though that's not your intent, even though you did it by accident. But if you actually hurt somebody, you know, that's why when people apologize for um, saying something that is um, disrespectful, you know, we have to do in, in network TV, we do uh, HR training now. And you can't say, if I hurt you, I didn't mean to, but if I hurt you, 
then, uh, you know, I didn't mean, you can't even say if I hurt you, then you're disrespecting the fact if you call me or you comment and you say that you were hurt, offended by something I said, you are offended. And all I can do is apologize for that. And the fact that I've been made in this climate so aware of being offensive, you know, oh, what does it say? Somebody's just sending me in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, somebody just said, do I want to have lunch? And I said, okay. Oh. I want to have lunch. That's nice. It if is you nice. were tap dancing in a store performing and you stepped on somebody tap dancing, would you apologize or would you be like, dude, I'm performing. Why are you this close? I think the element- well, I don't know that's a good question, but I will answer it. I would apologize. <laughs> no, I don't think I would apologize. I'd be like, yo, I'm performing. If you don't want to see this performance, don't fucking watch it. I don't wait, think, wait, wait, wait. You just said if you stepped on somebody. Exactly. If I was performing and I'm, I'm ta tap dancing here, Beat what it. the fuck are your toes doing in the way of my. <laughs> no, I would apologize. If that hurt you, I would. If I stepped on I'm you. I'm tap dancing. I'm performing here. Nothing here is real. This is an, this is an entertainment based thing. I disagree thing. with you. Are you going to let him talk to you like that? No, I disagree with you. <laughs> if I flail my arms when I'm talking and I'm just trying to be funny and I'm doing like this and, and my arm goes and somebody's standing there and I poke them in the eye, you're not going to go, oh, I'm sorry, I poked you in the eye. You're going to go, well, you're standing really close to my comedy. I'm performing. <laughs> Too bad I poked your eye out. But why is and it? And you know what? It, get somebody else to get a tissue to get all that blood off your cheek. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Is that your eyeball over there? Get it, pick it up before it dries out. You're ten. You're standing too close to my performance. No, I just think it's too sensitive. I think your joke was made in an entertainment way. You're obviously if it would have been doesn't matter. It would have been different if you walked up to somebody that actually was throwing up because they were like. Doesn't the Lord tell you not to hurt somebody else intentionally? Oh, but unintentionally, you're okay. You don't apologize for that. I mean, bro, you don't. I mean, you of course you you show respect. But there has to be. So a if you're line. on the freeway and you accidentally, they slam on the brakes hard and you slam on and go behind them, the, even the insurance company says it's your fault and mm -hmm. you got to pay for it. I agree. But you go, I, I was just driving. You put on your, you know, you got to say sorry. I don't, I don't mind you saying sorry, but I don't like the fact that look how many elements you have to go through on a TV show. This is why movies are not good. Right now, movies are not as good as they used to be because they're trying to please every single person. That's not comedy. People used to make fun of me. That's what got me out of the, being fearful of not being able to read, doing things that I made jokes about being dyslexic. I can't worry about another kid being like, oh, I, I am dyslexic. I, I deal with this all the time. I'm like, yeah, get no, it. No, you don't I mean, have to think about it in the moment. But if you are alerted to the fact of a dyslexic kid, you know, I heard your joke and I, and, and I feel like I was being made fun of. Yes. You can say, I'm sorry that you feel that way and I'll be cognizant of that. So yeah. I would apologize that he feels that way. Okay. But then I would also gently remind him my point of view. Because when you- And it wouldn't make you as a human being think about that? I would, what? if it hurt somebody, truly hurt somebody. That's I, what I'm saying. 100% so I would apologize. Who are you to judge whether somebody's truly hurt? They'll Nobody, I, but it shouldn't stop me from creating what I feel like I'm I should creating be creating. all the time and I'm still doing stand-up. You're asking me if I enjoy it and if I'm, cons I have concerns that I never had. There was a freedom 20 years ago that there isn't, that doesn't exist today. So does but they, that mean, but does that mean I stopped? I'm not locked away. I didn't quit. I'm not in a closet. I'm sitting there doing your podcast, my podcast. Uh, I'm I'm on still live TV. I'm on AGT. I still do stand up. I I put myself out there all the time. But I have this uh, awareness that I didn't have that makes it less fun than it used to be. And that to me is a mustard seed. I'm not saying now it's a problem. I'm saying it's going to grow into a problem. Okay. That's the only thing I, I, because like, I don't want to see Howie on stage filtering out through so many things to make sure the audience right here is not going to offend him. I want to see who Howie is, how he thinks, what he's doing. I want to see the natural raw of you where you were, you're screaming that alpha scream. I want to feel that. I think it's unfair. My feelings are coming into well, play. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something because I've made a choice in, in my career at this point, unlike, 
people like Bert Kreischer and all these other people that are Austin based and Tony Hinchcliffe and all these other people. I've made a decision. I love doing America's Got Talent. Mm -hmm. I love working for NBC. These are ad supported broadcast television shows. If I don't care about keeping those, then I could go, I have to, I know, I can't have both. You can't, I respect that completely. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. So I respect I, that, it, you're, you're doing your job. So I don't want to hurt people and in hurting people to go, hey, you were just dancing here. You know, you were just standing too close to me dancing. That's not how I'm going to react to it. At a point when I'm not doing or I make a decision that I don't care about that, I'm a responsible broadcaster. I'm a responsible human being. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a, you know, I'm a business owner. At a point when I don't care about that stuff, maybe I'll see that again. You know, I didn't have any of that Fair. stuff when I, I was starting. I completely see eye to eye with you now. Okay. So I think we've solved a lot of world problems. <laughs> I would love to talk about America's Got Talent because it seems like the most entertaining position to be in, to sit and watch like all sorts of different types of people. I mean, and that's why I'm um, shielding myself because I love that because yeah. there is no better job in the world to listen. I love entertainment. I love, uh, again, my FOMO. I'll watch everything on every platform, even when it's not in English and I don't understand what the fuck I'm looking at. It's fascinating to me that a yeah. human puts themselves in these positions and I don't know what they're doing. And the, and I, when I play Vegas, I, I went into the lounges and watched this person and that person. And then I have, I've been invited to the best seat in the house to watch people from all over the world show up and in front of me, not only entertain me and do these amazing things, but most of these people are people that haven't had access, that haven't had their hopes and their dreams realized. And you watch people show up and the next day, or I know, and uh, we, we say it all the time, your life has just changed forever. Yeah. And you watch hopes and dreams come true. You watch their life in that moment, you know, and I've predicted it even in this season. I said, you know, there was a country singer that came out. I said, you watch tomorrow that song is gonna be number one. And it was on the country chart, on Billboard, on every chart, that song went to number one. Wow. Last year, three of the country artists got um, nominated for country music awards. Uh, people like Cody Lee, a blind autistic kid who sat in the audience every year just to hear the show, sang in a commercial, in, in, in a commercial break during one of the tapings, they asked him to come back the next year. He is wow. a world, he's performing all over the world and in wow. Vegas, he's that autistic, kid the blind kid you know yeah. he is the piano player he's amazing watching these people's dreams come true yeah. the the kid that won the all-stars last year that aiden kid was he became an aerialist during covid he hung sheets from his grandmother's tree and learned to swing in the trees from youtube videos he's now <laughs> a, a world-renowned you know circus act that is just huge watching these dreams come true and watching people's creativity and humanity these are people who said and i think that covid kind of opened unlocked that that just said because we became more aware of our mortality mm -hmm. of like listen do it now or you don't know what tomorrow brings opened up the door for people to literally light themselves on fire and <laughs> hang upside down from the ceiling and watch how people react to it. And even people who are, you know, I get all the time on, on Twitter, people are going, well, this wasn't an amateur. They make a, it's not, it's not an amateur show. It's just people who want to propel themselves, even if they've had record deals, even if they're working full-time in this, to propel themselves on a stage that is bigger than any other stage in the world. You know, as yeah. big as America's Got Talent is, the Got Talent brand is the biggest brand in the world. And every season gets over 1 billion views on YouTube in each season. So these people become known, you know, they, they do these early releases on YouTube. You see these acts have, uh, you know, 40 million clicks before the show even airs. You know, that's, that's more incredible. important. The, the digital viewing yeah. is more important. It's, 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 it's wider than, you know, NBC still considers AGT the number one summer show, but in any given night, I don't think we, you know, seven to 10 million people watch it live, which is a nice number. That's crazy. But, you know. The views on YouTube. 
or even more yeah. and beyond America. And you become a worldwide sensation from yeah. doing something on that stage. And I get to get paid. You know, I, I joined in season four. I've been there for 14 seasons now. I watched every episode at home the same way. Now, you know, now they pay me to come in and put on a pair of pants and give me a check <laughs> to sit there and do what I was doing on the couch anyway, going, yeah. that's not a song. What the fuck is that? <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a blessing. Yeah. And that's why I'm willing to filter myself. Mm. Because Okay, I get that because you love it so much. But it's kind of taken away, you know, the, my, my main artistic love is comedy. So I've, I've had to put a filter on that and uh, fear on that if I want to do everything that I'm doing. And, you know, when I got into this business, it was great to have one job. You try to get one job. You know, a lot of people got into comedy and they hoped they would get a sitcom or become a movie star or and not go back to, you know, like Eddie Murphy and all these people who went off and did other things. I, uh, the, my happy place is on stage because... That's where I, you know, started. That's what I still do. But I also like these other things and I don't want to give them up. So I can be on AGT. I can be a stand-up. I yeah. can be a podcaster. I can and be a guest on panel. You know, there's a season for everything. You know what I mean? Like maybe this, this right now is your primal focus and maybe in a little bit, it'll be back to comedy or back to this. You know I don't I mean? give anything up. Yeah, I exactly. just don't, can't focus mm. on one thing. Do you have one thing? Favorite, like out of the 14 seasons you've been on, do you have like one favorite act that you've never forgotten about? There is a couple, but I think Courtney Hadwin was a 13 year old little girl who uh, was incredibly um, shy. She came from England. She was 13 years old. And they told me that she was uh, painfully shy and she was supposed to come on next. And I was going to be, you notice how each judge, as they come out, we have we take our turns and go, what's your name? Where are you from? What are you going to do? And where the each judge leads the particular act into what they're doing. And they said that she was the, Howie, uh, she's not going to come out next. She's almost sick. She can't even, she's so scared. Mm. So another act came out and then they said she will come out next, but we're going to have Mel B talk to her because she's from England and maybe that'll comfort her a little more to hear somebody with a similar accent talk to her so mel b interviewed her and uh she uh was so shy she couldn't even talk and then she said she wanted to sing and then this girl just blew the roof off the place when she started to sing she was like an, a little janice joplin the beauty of this show for me this is a great escape from everything that is negative. This is, if you don't like what you're seeing, you know, hang on to it for another three minutes and the next one coming out where you're going, why? And from this moment to some guy, you know, spinning himself on a, a sword through his belly button, <laughs> is, is it's just crazy and it makes you smile and it makes you forget and it makes you enjoy. And I like being a small part of this. And as I said to you at the beginning of this, humans are amazing. Humans are not to be described. Human humanity, this is a little girl from a, a, a tiny town in Northern England uh, who you would not believe, who's now 3,000 miles away or 5,000 miles away from home, just blowing the roof off of strangers with music that, people her age don't even really listen to. Yeah. That and was crazy. Yeah. It's the and but, but the every there's so many crazy moments. Everybody should watch AGT and uh I'm very proud to be a small part of it and it's worth me um putting up a little bit of a filter that I have to put up in the art form that I personally love creating the most. Yeah. I love that. I really do. How's your relationship with other judges? amazing so these are all really good friends uh including mel who uh, uh i'm going to be working with again i haven't announced yet but we're going to be working again uh real soon um uh, heidi and simon and sophia and now terry cruz and i are really good friends who see our we see each other even beyond the show they've all been on my podcast mm -hmm. and i do whatever it is they need me to do i'm doing a show with sophia next week um, I and love her, Sophia. And, and her so son, fun. she's so funny and so smart and so witty. And Heidi is brilliant 
wonderful uh also everybody's really smart and has a, an incredible uh they're just good human beings and That's i just awesome. want to surround myself with good human beings you are who you hang out with yeah yeah you yeah. really adapt on that right and I anybody who hangs out with me is a great human being <laughs> <laughs> they are amazing i am i uh i watched an episode where an italian guy was singing like a, a Frank Sinatra song. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that was a I, Heidi's Golden Brothers. I, yes. I watched that like 15 times in a row. It was amazing. That was, his yeah. confidence, his swag to her. And like, also his family. I don't know. You <laughs> see his cousin. That Dude, his cousin. The, 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 the chain. Down. Yeah. Yeah. But I a cigar. Like you just yes. want a cigar at doors. Right. But, you know, <clears throat> just a window into the world. This gives you a window. These are who people are. This is This is them. We can't stage that. I can't make that girl sing like that. And she's not an actress. I can't get her to act shy. Where is yeah. she now? She's So her parents made her go back to school. So she's back in school. She's about 16, 17. Follow her on TikTok. She's releasing new music with a new, uh, you know, Psycho, uh, Simon closed down Psycho. So um, the music department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, she signed to another label and she's been working with, she's got great music. And so are a lot of the, uh, I ended up, there was, a, there was a run of me hitting golden buzzers for these 13 year old little girls. Grace Vanderwall is another one who played the ukulele. And now she's like this high end fashion model, musician. Do you know who Grace Vanderwall is? No, maybe if I maybe if I see her. I probably see her. Put a picture I'd, of her up. Yeah. Put a picture of her up. Watch this. Oh, yes, it, no, no, that's that's Courtney. There's a few that I. Well, you could see it right in front of you. That's I can look there, so you're not looking. Oh yeah, what are your, we doing? You're looking Why is at your camera. Us? No, because I didn't even realize that there was a TV here until just now. No, I, but show her oh, now. Oh wait, yes, 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 I, yes, I yes, watched this the, episode. The, yes, yeah, she's great. But show a picture. Yes. Yeah, show her picture of her now, though. She played like a small guitar. It's called a ukulele. <laughs> it's like a, a what Colleen Ballinger uses to apologize. The instrument that Colleen Ballinger uses to do you know what I'm talking about? No. You don't? Who's who? Uh do you know the girl that did Miranda sings? Oh, oh yes, no, 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 we don't know her. We don't know her. We <laughs> she's Okay. Going, she's going through like a tough time right now. You know that? Yeah, uh, I was, do. It she used apologize. But do yeah, the latest the pictures apology. of her. You yeah. don't have the latest pictures of her. Images now. And you'll see she's she's worked for like Michael Kors and babe, we keep looking over there. Yeah. That's her now. She's like a high fashion. She's beautiful. She yeah. is beautiful. But I knew her when she was like 12 and 13. Mm. Was she your golden? She was another your golden, one. Yeah. My, my golden buzzers. My golden buzzers have actually all gone on to do really good stuff. Let's go. I've, I've got a really good uh, eye and ear for talent. And George, you're going to be something. I really appreciate that. Yeah. That's a big moment. That means a lot. I thought there was a roast Are going you on still, there. No. Are you still pursuing stand-up? I am. When I last talked to you, Joe Coy was going to take you. Uh, he was uh, mentoring me. Yeah, he mentoring you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got the first time I ever did stand-up was uh, opening up for him. Yeah. Uh, and then he's he, a good it, man too. Yeah, he introduced me to some people, and I haven't done it at all this year okay. because I was trying to get this show off the ground and some okay. other projects. It's off the ground. Thank you. And uh, I want to. Uh, get back into it, and that's just my baby, man. Like, I, and to be honest, if I'm, I'll be, ask you about that on my podcast. Okay, yeah, save that. Yes, yeah. thank you. That's podcast. actually a great. Thank you, thank you. Yes, okay, of course. Or, I, honestly, I think we did a great job. I think. Oh, it's over, right? I think it is. It is. I think it is. How how long do we go for? Just to make sure. An hour and a half. I think it is ninety minutes. I really wow. appreciate your time, and wow. also and I just you know what time flies when you're having fun. This it seems like seventy four minutes, doesn't it? Like if you're just listening to it. I I, I agree with him. All right. Seventy-four. Thank All you right. for for uh, for being a good human being, and and I. And oh, I you're really, welcome. I really, really want to do it for you. I and I appreciate. I know you do it for me, but <laughs> and I, good I, luck with the ointment thanks. and your lungs. They're so sensitive. <laughs> no, listen. It was a bad way of explaining it, but it was just an event of you know thing after a thing. So in the car, I can't I, um, believe gonna, it said Ida ointment. I know. I, All right. Well, uh, it was good it. to be in your uh, little cough fest. Thank you. Is there anything that you want to like uh, talk about before we wrap up? Like a, like something you want to promote or, or something? Just my pod. About? Howie Mandel does stuff. I do it with my daughter. You're going to be on it. And uh, it's it, we drop it every Tuesday wherever you get your uh, podcasts. AGT season 18 is on. Uh, merch at HowieMandel.com where you can uh, subscribe and comment. And uh, just, uh, I don't have anything. Do I have anything else to promote, guys? 
Well, your manager is saying no. Your manager, <laughs> your manager is telling me to say no. He goes, wrap it yeah. up. He's once, like, That's good. once I show up and show my abs, there is nothing more to be done. His job is done. I didn't huh? even know he shaved his head. Anyways, he was just, right. see, he was inspired by you. I know. I can't. Are you saying something? Is he saying something? There. No, I just said you inspire me. I said I said that for you. See, I know him. Jamie. I know him very well. He's your manager. <laughs> Is it, wouldn't that be weird to be managed by a perfect stranger you've never spoken to? You don't know who they are. They just have great abs, and that's the criteria for management. That's all you need. He's right. said he goes. I can handle this. All right, I'll talk to you later. Thank, Thank you, you guys so much. So much. Bye.